people. Here we go. Some news headlines. Let's go. Hey, got people. Well, another example. When I tell people, when you get involved in things or you try to help somebody that needs help and that's asking for help, you take your life into your own hands. Uh, luckily, there were multiple men to take down this one guy. But uh, he ran his car into the place and was going to kill him. And let's see what happened. Situation that unfolded at a Minneapolis fire station. Firefighters sharing the moments they had to use an axe to stop a violent man from hurting a woman who ran... Oh, they used an axe. Man, those things are dangerous. I wonder if it was one of those assault apps or one of those ghost gun or ghost apps axes. And they're for protection. Sean Coates is in jail tonight facing charges after allegedly ramming his truck into the fire station. Fox 9's Bab Santos shares more on the quick thinking of the firefighters at Station 8. Minneapolis firefighters encounter tough situations. Look at the hat and the gloves on this guy. Probably pretty cold out here on a night to night basis, but a crew of firefighters here at Station 8 is still coming to grips with exactly what happened on Thursday night. I looked <laughs> fire dude comes out, no gloves, no jacket, no hat, <laughs> no hair. <laughs> Rick, why are you all oh, be quiet on Blaisdell and there's a car coming the wrong way and it's pulling into the station and then I see the woman right here. A distraught woman running outside just before 8 o'clock on a night with temperatures dipping to 15 degrees below. Woman running around at night, 15 below, asking for help. I, she was standing right here. She said, "I'm." he's following me and I'm scared. This is important. He's following me and I'm scared. She left out the part that she will later say it was her boyfriend. In that moment, the fire station became a place of refuge for her, and half a dozen firefighters ushered her inside. But the man after her, 52-year-old Sean Coates, was intent on coming inside, too. I had never been spoken to like that. Oh, he spoke to him really bad, because everybody loves a fireman and their heroes, sitting around, cooking dinner, parking this big-ass red truck everywhere, blocking traffic and shit while they go shopping. Anyway, I digress. In uniform. Yeah, he was very upset. He called me a couple of uh, N-words. Oh, he called him the N-word. Ooh, that would be a big story. Except he's black, so it's okay. So we only have special words for special colored people, right? Okay. And whatnot like that. Then Cullen Black says the man hit the gas, gunning his car right at the fire captain twice. He would have taken me out. Instead, he just missed, ramming the door of the station. But it wasn't over. Coach then got out of the car. He had his hand behind his back, and then I said, hey, he might have a gun. Anybody got any hair at this place? Oh, maybe this guy does. Guys, so we all kind of scattering. As the fire crew retreated, oh. arming themselves with axes, he's... Look at those mean weapons they got. Man, I wonder if they got to register them or if the government knows they... Those are accounted for. ...stayed on them. One very angry man taking on six firefighters. One man taking on six firefighters. Had he had a gun, he'd have won single-handedly there was all of us and two other people and he had no fear of us there was no calming him down either the man squared up with him it took a swing two swings the captain of teak but eventually the crew was able to subdue him i mean we had to hold legs arms and he he fought us the whole time we all got on top of him and we were just able to restrain him and uh there were no injuries the police arrived within a minute to two minutes two man the cops showed up fast wow wonder if everyone else in the city gets two minutes of responses or if it's just the fire department buddies. Uh, I'll, I'll answer that. It's the fire department, believe me. That's a good place for cops to go watch football games, hang out, hide. Two days later, Minneapolis police are calling it a potential domestic incident. Oh, it's a domestic incident. It's not domestic violence. He was going to kill her. He rammed the car into the station and threatened all these people. And it's not domestic violence. It's a domestic incident. Really? Wow. Man, I wonder what kind of special treatment we get. Saying the woman said the man was her boyfriend. Oops. Coates has been charged with assault, property damage, and making threats. His first court appearance is scheduled for Monday. At Fox 9 buying our guys Eddie Bauer. Wow. Afternoon. All right. Look, any of these guys could end up dead. They had axes and they had numbers. Again, helping somebody, a woman, her boyfriend, she gets involved with, she's with him, and then she wants other people to risk their lives. And then if you act and you help, you somehow get liability or sued or get killed. All right, we'll end it there.